morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Hi, my name is Mira, and welcome back to my channel. Good to be back. Good to be doing movie reviews again. I hope you feel the same way. <laughs> As usual, if you haven't, please click that bell button besides my subscribe button so you will be notified if I upload something new. And I think that is very necessary because my upload schedule is a bit wonky forever since I do have a full-time job and I'm doing this just for fun, but I'm trying to do my best to be updated with all the movies that are roaming around the earth right now, so click that bell button, you won't regret it. Now Deadpool 2 is the highly anticipated sequel of The Merc with a Mouth and it is a movie that I've been waiting for other than Avengers Infinity War. I love the first movie so much with dark humor and a touch of cancer. It was definitely the most romantic movie of the year. And if you still can't detect the sarcasm here, you probably haven't seen Deadpool yet and do not know what I am talking about. But regardless of the rated R status, Deadpool is a fun movie and this sequel is no exception. But I did hear some chatter that some people think the second movie is worse than the first movie. I however, disagree. I'll begin by telling you a short synopsis of the movie. Deadpool is being the Deadpool that we all know and love, but he somehow got into trouble. I would not specify how he got into trouble, it would definitely spoil some major plot. And he ended up in jail with a metahuman boy named Russell, or as his power will signify him, Fire Fist. At first, Deadpool didn't want to have anything to do with Fire Fist, but when a time-traveling mutant named Cable wanted to murder that poor boy, Deadpool realized what he should have been doing all along, which is protecting Fire Fist and doing whatever it takes to save him, including hiring a bunch of other mutants and calling them X-Force for a rescue mission. So that's what I can tell you without spoiling a bunch of details. <laughs> So if you haven't seen the movie, stop here. If not, and you want to continue, let's just say Deadpool would wreck Professor X's chair and then leave you for it. It could happen. So, I have to admit that I did not see the beginning of the movie. It was work night and I came to the theater quite late, so when I tiptoe to the theaters. What I see first is Deadpool with his costume and is kissing his lovely lady. And when I took my seat, Vanessa already told Deadpool that she is ready to be pregnant. Now, this is when I knew that it will never going to happen for the both of them. I mean, I would love to see Lil Wayne Wilsons running around and doing mayhem with their father, but I just knew that it was too good to be true. So when I see the bad guys storming in in their apartment, I wasn't surprised. But what did surprise me is Vanessa being dead this fast into the movie. I love Wade and Vanessa's relationship so much, I thought they were meant for each other. I didn't cry, but I did wish to see them more and not just for the first 5 minutes. However, this did give Deadpool 2 a much deeper storyline. I mean, come on. The first one is just about Wade Wilson having a pizza face and didn't have the guts to face his girlfriend. So he hunted the man that caused his face to be like that and then demanded for his face to be reconstructed. Obviously, when that's not going to happen, Deadpool probably kills the guy. It's so simple and so shallow, yet we enjoyed it because the first Deadpool movie was riddled with dark humor and amazing fourth wall breaking, which was the first for a Marvel movie. But this second one has more bass, more backstory, and a sound one too. Deadpool actually avenged his lover's death, even though he moaned and fussed the rest of the way. <laughs> then eventually finding his peace by saving this mutant's child future. Well, he doesn't really avenge the death, he just, you know, like, make peace with Vanessa being dead by saving Fire Fist. That's what I'm trying to say. Then besides the storyline, there's never-ending jokes and dialogues about teasing other movies. I'm talking about the Thanos remarks, the DC Universe line, and so many others that I cannot seem to remember right now, but I will when I see the movie again, 
maybe someday in the near future. All of their placings are great, but I'm afraid that the anecdotes and the little tidbits were a little bit too much this time. However, despite that little doubt, I still enjoy every piece of joke that Deadpool throw at us. Moving on with the movie, we get to see Deadpool work with some of the mutants that eventually became the X-Force. Maybe I was the one who got too gullible, but I thought X-Force would play some prominent role in saving Fire Fist. Maybe because the marketing team has put on so much spotlight on the team, especially Peter, the plain guy that doesn't have any superpowers but apparently is a delight to everyone. So I was feeling good, feeling great when I see them got recruited for this mission and got fairly disappointed when all of them died and the only one left is Domino. Granted that this is Deadpool and he will annoy us very very much, but I still wish I get to see more of the team. They cast some nice actors too, especially Terry Crews because I love that guy so much. So hopefully Wade will, you know, use the time thingamajig not only to let the team leave but actually nurture them and became the next X-Men. Maybe. One can hope. Finally, we can delve into characters. Naturally, I will not talk about Deadpool or Wade Wilson anymore because this movie is about him and he is still the same dinker horn that we all know and love. So instead, I focus on the others. The recurring characters are pretty much predictable except for Dopinder, which now became my most favorite recurring characters. I don't think that he will be such a fanatic of Deadpool that he would go head over heels just to work with Wade Wilson. <laughs> Other than that, we have plenty of new characters in the movie. The main ones that I would be talking about would be Cable, Fire Fist, uh, Domino of course, and Yukio. I would talk about Cable and Fire Fist at once because they correlates and I think they are the reason why this movie doesn't really have a true villain. At first glance, someone might think that Cable will be the villain, but as the story moves forward, the villain slowly shifts to Fire Fist because he would be the future villain that will wipe out Cable's entire family. To be honest, yes, there is an actual bad guy, but he never really resurfaced. But other than that, this movie doesn't really have a horrible person at all, which makes it so unique. Usually, a movie with a weak villain would not impress much, but this is actually the opposite. However, I am a bit disheartened by some of the characters. Not because the characters are bad, but because of how much potential they could have if they are, I don't know, maybe written more properly. Take Domino for instance. Her powers are cool and she can have her own personality other than being lucky. But we only see her for her powers and nothing else. Yes, there's a small part about her coming back to her school where Fire Fist also came from. But other than that, we don't see much of her. Then there's Yukio who are crazy adorable, but we cannot learn how she ended up with Negasonic Teenage Warhead even though I am sure that it will be a great story to put in there. I just want to see more of them. More intimacy, more backstory, just more of the people around Deadpool. But I was surprised to see the Juggernaut. He did a great job being the ass hat of the bunch. So. Bottom line, should you see this movie? As always, please make sure you are old enough to see this movie. Oh yeah, also disclaimer, this movie is cut for a few minutes in my country. So if you feel like I miss anything important from this review, let me know. It could be because of the scenes that I did not see at all. But if you are old enough to watch this movie and if you like the dark, twisted comedy of the Merc with a Mouth, then please by all means watch Deadpool 2. For me personally, it's better than the first. But that's just one woman's opinion. You really have to watch it yourself. So that is all I have for you guys today. That felt good. I finally finished a movie review. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts by dropping a comment, like, or subscribe. And don't forget to follow my Facebook and Instagram. They are in my description below. Thank you again so much for watching and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you next time. I hit something. Bye. <laughs>